Good morning and hello fellow wanderers and welcome back to my channel. My name is Ian, uh, you may know me as Wanderbeard here on the channel and I'm really excited to uh, explore a new place today. I have arrived in San Diego, California, uh, the next stop on my trip across the United States. I actually took a quick trip up to Boston to a friend's wedding for the last few days, so apologize for the lack of updates. The wedding was a great time, everyone had a blast, and so yeah, now we're back in California and ready to continue our trip south. So here in today's video, we're going to go explore the San Diego Zoo, uh, probably one of the most famous zoos in North America, arguably also the world, and we're going to go check that out. So after today, uh, I'll be heading to Mexico tomorrow. I'm actually taking the train down from San Diego to Tijuana at the border crossing. And I'm going to walk across the border and spend one night in Tijuana before heading south along the Baja coast down to Ensenada, where I'll be there for about one week. So while here in San Diego for a couple of nights, uh, I decided to stay at the Hostel Ling International Hostel. Uh, it's right down in the Gas Lamp District, I believe it's called, in San Diego. And it's been great. Uh, it's a nice little spot. They actually have a, a large number of uh, private rooms available, some with bathrooms, some with just using the public bathroom down the hall. I decided to go with the private bathroom uh, room after a couple of busy days on the road between the wedding and then flying to San Diego last night. Um, and yeah, it's a great little spot. So. The variety of sleeping options here is pretty wide. They have four bed and eight bed rooms with shared beds like bunk beds. And then they also have private bunk bed rooms uh, and then the private doubles. So I'll give you a quick tour of the room that I'm staying in here. It's up on the third floor. It's room 313. And yeah, it's a great little spot. It overlooks, I'll show you the outside view here first actually. So. Out the window here you can see this is the gas lamp district with all the bars and restaurants and it extends for a few blocks in each direction but um, yeah it's good it wasn't too loud last night either which was nice so so that's good uh, air conditioner I actually have it off at the moment it's not too bad in here so double sized bed which was nice and comfy last night good for sleeping on lots of pillows i uh, got a ceiling fan is there as well to keep things cool. Little work desk area here. Um, and then over here we have the standard. We get a sink here. There's a bar fridge here under the sink as well. And then in here is the shower and toilet. And uh, don't mind the laundry, I'm just washing some socks. But so yeah, a great spot, uh, nice big room. They also include a free continental breakfast. So from 7.30 to 9.30 every morning down in the third floor kitchen, uh, they have the usual stuff. So they have like bagels and oatmeal and bananas and juice and coffee and those types of things, um, all free included with your stay here. So anyway, let's get packed up and get going. Uh, the zoo is uh, quite large. It's one of the biggest zoos around, I believe, might be the biggest in the country, certainly the most famous. And uh, let's go up there and have a look and see what we can explore uh, over the few hours that we'll be there. So let's get going. Welcome to the San Diego Zoo. Let's uh, get inside since I already have my ticket. Yes. But do you have it on your phone? Yeah. How's it going? It's probably too small to scan, is it? Nah, that's good. Thank you. Now, instead of just getting the print map, there's actually a barcode you can scan. It's 
when you scan that barcode, it actually opens up to the San Diego Zoo app on Google Play. Let's take a little quick look at the map here. So the zoo is open from 9 to 9 today. And there's uh, aerial tram, there's bus tours, there's kangaroo bus tours. Uh, all kinds of different stuff. So you start when you come in, you start down here. And uh, as you can see, there is a, a lot to see. So I think the best thing to do here uh, when you first get here is to, I've been told, is to go on the bus tour. It's included with your ticket and it gives you a kind of a loop around the entire park. And so I think that's a good place to start. One of the other things worth noting too, of course, is, uh, which is always beneficial to know, is that the park has its own free Wi-Fi as well. So make sure you, when you get here, you hook up to that so that you can download the app over Wi-Fi and all the other information that you might need. All right, let's go hop on the bus door. How's it going? Good morning, thank you. So we're just in the lineup now for the bus tour. Shouldn't be too long, I don't think. Cause I think they go pretty quickly. So it takes about a half an hour to get on to the bus, I would say, based on the wait time so far. And I would say I'm probably on the next one, so that lines up. And then the bus tour itself is about 35 minutes. And I believe it brings you back to where you started. So then you can go explore all the things you want from there. All right, so that was probably even less than 30 minutes wait, I would say, in the end of it all. I got on the very next tour bus, so the wait wasn't even what I expected it to be. So yeah, now we're just waiting to get going, which should be within a minute or two, I would say. Once this thing fills up, we will be ready to go. conservation hubs. Those are eight different areas around the world that we focus our conservation efforts. As we travel to these faraway places, we will be viewing plants and animals from all around the world. I'm going to tell you all about them, about our partners that we collaborate with to find innovative solutions for wildlife, and hopefully by the end of our tour today, I can provide you with some ways that you can be an ally for wildlife to help us create a world where all life thrives. Uh, the Lost Forest represents our Asian Rainforest Conservation Hub. So looking around, the plants that surround us are plants that would be found in an Asian Rainforest, as well as the animals that live here. In just a moment, we're going to be pulling up to our first habitat on our right side here. And this animal is a master of camouflage, so he may be hard to find in the habitat. All right, in this habitat, we have a couple different types of primates. We've got the Allen Swamp Monkey and Gwenin. And these monkeys are fishing monkeys, so you may have to stand to look down into the, the bottom of the habitat near the water. That's sometimes where they like to hang out. These monkeys were rescued from the bushmeat trade, now safely living here with us. If you look just beyond their habitat, you'll see the bridge where the people are standing. On the other side of the bridge, we have some more primates. I can actually see a monkey from here on the rock there. You'll also find red river hogs, as well as the otters over there. But these flamingos look a little bit different, right? What's different about these flamingos? Their color, exactly. So the reason why the flamingos are two different colors is because they're two different types of flamingos. The flamingos at the front are the American flamingos, and these are the greater African flamingos. Flamingos actually get that pink coloration because of something they like to eat. Does anyone know what that is? Rams 
Yes, they eat the shrimp, but they turn that beautiful pink color. So, the reason why the American flamingos are a little more bright is because they enjoy more shrimp, while these guys enjoy more veggies. All right, everyone, coming up on the left side, you are about to witness one of the most dangerous creatures in the entire world. It's the California driver. All jokes aside, if you take the 163 freeway up north for about 40 minutes, you will find our sister park, the Safari Park. If you have the chance to visit there, you'll definitely want to go to the kangaroo habitat. You can actually get inside and be one of the kangaroos. Coming up on our left side, this is where you'll find the polar bear plunge, where we have three polar bears living. If you come back later, you can go to the viewing window and it will give you access to almost the entire habitat. Our polar bears do have an area that's essentially a giant freezer, so they can go into when they are trying to cool off. Up ahead, that thing in the sky is the Sky Fari. A great way to get from one end of the zoo to the other while getting a bird's eye view into the habitats below. If you hop on the Sky Fari on this side of the zoo, it'll drop you off right next to Explorers Base Camp, Reptile, and the Exit. That purple bus is currently stopped at Kangaroo Bus Stop 3, and this is going to be a pro tip for you. Bus Stop 3 is the closest to the front. If you're looking to get to Base Camp, Reptiles, or the Exit, this is the stop you'll want to get off at. And coming up on our left side here, this animal is called the Rock Hyrax. Do we have any guesses of what animal the Rock Hyrax might be related to? A gopher is a good guess? But the answer is probably going to surprise you. If you look at their skull structure, they actually have tusks and are closely related to elephants. If you get a good look at their face, you may even see their tusks hanging out from behind their lips, making them look like little vampires. Boxes are so that our elephants have to use their trunk and their muscles to reach up to get to their food and continue to mimic their natural behaviors here at the zoo. Now, since I'm seeing our care specialists are out in their habitat, that means that our elephants are most likely in the care center. If only this guy would follow the rules and sit down. Some things that are done are the training exercises that I was telling you about. There's also health check-ins, and because elephants walk about six miles a day, foot care is very important for them, so they also receive pedicures. We work with an organization called Reteti, which is an elephant sanctuary in Kenya, Africa, and they're doing some really important Thank work you. for elephants. Some of you may know that elephants are often hunted for their tusks for the ivory trade, and while that's unfortunate, what makes it even more unfortunate is that often leaves baby elephants orphaned. And before we take off and say goodbye to Shaba, if it's okay with you, I'd like to tell you a personal story. About six years ago, I was teaching English in Thailand, and while I was there, I was able to visit an elephant sanctuary called the Elephant Nature Park. And they're doing some really important work for elephants as well. In Thailand, elephants are often used for tourism purposes. So what the nature park is doing is taking in those elephants, rehabilitating them, and giving a place to retire and live out their lives in peace. And one of our girls, her name is Zara, she really likes the core of the lettuce head, you know, the part that keeps all the leaves together. So they always save that part for her for last. Back in the 1980s, there were only 22 of these birds left. They were on the verge of extinction. This is because of a chemical that farmers were using in the area, area that was making their eggshells so thin that they would break upon a coming out of the mother. And they only lay about one egg a year. So we partnered with the Los Angeles Zoo to start a breeding program to get those numbers up. And now, from 22 California condors, there are over 500. We're cruising by Kangaroo Bus Stop 4. And if you find yourself feeling lost today, don't feel bad about it because it's pretty easy to get lost. Our zoo is about 100 acres with lots of hills and valleys. But that's why we have these map locators like this number 10 up ahead here. You can look on the map and figure out exactly where you are using those locators. And now on our right side, we have entered our Australian Forest Conservation Hub. So you're going to be looking through the trees and looking out for koalas, 
We actually have the largest population of koalas outside of Australia. And if you happen to catch a koala that's awake, you're pretty lucky because they actually spend about 20 to 22 hours sleeping every single day. As we head up Africa Rocks, everything that you're going to want to see is going to be on our left side until we reach the top of the hill. The first animal is going to be off into the distance a little bit, and you might be surprised to know that this animal is found in Africa. Because typically when we think of penguins, we think of them from the snowy environments, but they actually come from a variety of different environments. You can find our African penguins swimming around, catching fish, and hanging out in the holes in the rocks, their little caves there. So the bus tour was really good. Uh, it's a great overview of the whole park. Uh, it's about 30, 35 minutes. Uh, I would recommend sitting on the right side of the bus if you come here. Uh, most of the attractions and animals were on the right side. Uh, I'd sit up top as well, if you don't mind the heat. And yeah, it's a great way to see a quick tour of around the park. So now I'm going to uh, head up and go for a little walk and see if I can find the bus that's here at the park to get me over to the gondola ride, which takes you as an overview across the park as well. So let's go. So your first reaction when you come here is that you may have some sticker shock to the price of the park. It's, uh, you know, like 70 to $75 for a regular ticket, US, for one day, which includes the bus tour, the gondola rides, the whole bit. But what's important to know is that 100% uh, of the money that they get from ticket sales and merchandise sales and whatever, whatever, uh, it all goes back to the park. So I think that the value of coming here given its non-profit status, is kind of cool. I think a lot of parks would probably, you know, be for profit and be more concerned about maybe, be more concerned about making money as opposed to respecting the animals and taking care of them. So I think, uh, yeah, San Diego Zoo is definitely a good one to come check out. As she mentioned on the tour, everyone's favorite garden is the uh, the beer garden here. They have frozen margaritas and mixed drinks and all kinds of good stuff if you need to cool off a little bit. There's a much more showing you that urban jungle area as well. So the urban jungle is here on the right hand side. I'm trying to get to the bears, which I think is actually this way. So. Uh, I got it. We're good. Gotta go this way. Just making my way down through the bear habitats here. The sloth bear was the first one, but apparently they decided to go and get some shade, which I can't blame them. The ducks, of course, have no problem being out. So he's hard to see, but one of the grizzly bears, I'll see if I can zoom in on him, is actually hiding behind the waterfall. I think all you can probably see from here is maybe his foot behind the waterfall on the right. And this is the site of the North American grizzly bear. Uh, however, I assume he's probably up hiding in the shade somewhere as well. You probably want to get here fairly early in the mornings as well before it gets too hot, because what ends up happening, of course, is that most of the animals aren't big fans of the heat so they end up going and chilling in the shade um, or in caves or wherever they can find some cool air well she's got her back to us but she's sitting right there in the middle on her little swing this is the andean bear from south america Really 
hanging out in the back having a snack. That's a zoomed in as I can make it. It is uh, heating up here fast, so one of the areas you can walk through that's pretty well shaded is an area called the Lost Forest. So while we work our way back, we'll go take a walk through there. A lot of stairs. That's all right. Now it's a shade though too. Yeah, she just have a seat right here for a minute. Even now, as busy as this park is, this is a nice quiet little spot to come and just kind of enjoy the nature. Well, after a little break, I have to go up this way anyway. If I want to get to the sky gondola ride.
Just making my way down to uh, the polar bear exhibit. Just checking out some of the other animals along the way here. Bontebok antelope. Hanging out in the back there by the shade. Specky gazelle from Somalia and the lesser kudu from East Africa. So we're here now at the polar bear plunge. Take a walk inside and see if we can find some polar bears. A little hard to see, but he's actually standing up in the water, right on the edge. I'll go up top and see if I can get a shot of the head too. Just gonna wait for the Kangaroo Express, which is the bus that takes you around the park. Uh, it's different from the tour bus, which was a non-stop thing. This is a hop-on, hop-off bus. Uh, I believe there's five or six stops uh, around the park. So I'm gonna use this to head on up to the Elephant Sanctuary. From stop number three, you can walk down the hill to visit polar bears or go to the zebras. You can get to the front of the zoo from stop three, the quickest, by flying on the Skyfari. That'll take you over to base camp, near the reptiles, close to the exit of the zoo. Another fast option is walking across the Bash Road Bridge. So I just got off at the stop number four on the bus and making my way up through the area with elephants and camels and uh, I was going to call this a llama, but it's not. It's actually called a guanaco. And here we have some single hump camels. And a donkey, maybe. Keep making my way around here.
I've made my way up to the elephant area of the park. And as you can see, there's a couple of elephants uh, out here chilling at the moment. So, so I'm going to make my way back down now to the uh, main entrance part of the zoo. I would say that I've been here for about three and a half hours now at this point, and I've seen about 15, 20% of the park. Uh, there's so much to see here. Uh, it's such a great place. Um, I highly recommend it to everybody to come and check it out. Um, you know, budget for a full day if you're going to come, because there's, yeah, there's so much to see, especially if it's busy. Some things will take a little longer to get to see lineups, you know, that sort of thing. So keep that in mind as well, that um, that may play a part in how long it takes to visit. But yeah, uh, great spot. Lots of kids here too, so if you've got kids, it's a great place to come with your kids for the day and see all the animals and exhibitions and all the various things as well. So we're going to head back down to the front. Thank you as always for watching. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and leave a comment below to let me know that you were here. If you'd like to support me further, there are a couple links in the description below where you can contribute in some other ways. In the meantime, remember, life is short, so go wander. Have a great day. I'll see you next time.